Hello, hello, and welcome once again, everyone. Today's video features the brand new premium tier 8 French battleship Champagne. How could a French ship have a more iconically French name than Champagne? And what better way to celebrate a freshly launched ship than with a free Champagne giveaway? This giveaway is for subscribers only and all you have to do to enter is reply in the comment section below with your in-game name and the server you play on. This giveaway is available for a limited time only, so check the pinned comment for exact dates and updates. Despite having almost 3k subs, only 600 of you entered in the previous giveaway for the A-Gear, so a lot of you are still missing out on a free chance to pick up a great premium ship at no cost. I urge you to enable your YouTube notifications by clicking that bell icon below so you don't miss out on these great giveaways in the future. Even if you prefer other classes and are personally not interested in the Champagne, there are more free ship giveaways just around the corner. So click that bell icon today. Without further ado, Let's take a closer look at the Champagne and all she potentially brings to the table. After testing various builds and playstyles, I've accumulated a better understanding of Champagne's strengths and weaknesses. So let's start off by putting up the ship build here on screen. So as we move on through the ship's exact stats, it's all based on this build, with the intention of playing a particular way, playing into the ship's strengths and learning to avoid its weaknesses to maximize Champagne's performance in game. This build is all about maximizing tank and mobility where possible, with the intention of being that fearsome predator lurking on the flanks and edges of battle to take advantage of any opportunities to land those punishing salvos. This is not a battleship where one ideally leads the charge or tanks damage for the team, but uses its stealth and great mobility to position itself to provide effective fire where help is needed most. This playstyle is not what one would consider conventional for most battleships, and there are a number of reasons why it can suffer if played in a more direct, confrontational manner. Let's start off with the armor layout. As you can see from this simple port screenshot, Champagne is very lightly armoured, with both a fore and aft end plating of only 25mm. If one does a quick comparison to other tier 8 battleships, the standard armour protection for fore and aft end plating is 32mm for virtually all others. What this boils down to is that virtually every tier 8 battleship is capable of overmatching both your bow and stern with 380mm guns. The only exception to this is the new German battleship Odin. This is basically cruiser level armour protection and will be a deciding factor in developing a successful playstyle for the Champagne. Champagne gets an upper armour belt and main deck plating of 32mm while her main casemate armour belt is protected by 240mm. Again, very much on the low side. If one does a quick compare with her French compatriots, the Richelieu and Gascoigne, that have 330 and 320mm of main belt armour respectively. Champagne's two turrets get decent protection, with a frontal plate of 430mm a side plating of 300, a rear plating of 270 millimeters, and two sloped top plates of 195 and 170 millimeters. Considering Champagne's ideal range of engagement, these turrets rarely got knocked out for me, which is very important because having just two turrets, if at any point one gets knocked out, losing 50% of your gunpowder can be very annoying. So let's move on to Champagne's survivability and hold on to your hats here, because Champagne gets the lowest amount of hit points of any tier 8 battleship. 
even lower than the Odin at 52,600. She gets a max of 4 repair parties when using the superintendent skill which is virtually a prerequisite for all battleship builds. Champagne gets a torpedo protection damage reduction of 28% which is above average when compared to her tier 8 competitors. At a first glance you will be forgiven for thinking to yourself that Champagne is so lightly armoured and with such a low health pool how can it possibly be classified as a battleship and why on earth would one ever choose to play it over its more armoured competitors? The answer is quite simple and threefold. It's firepower, range and mobility. Let's start with the first two and look a bit closer at Champagne's main battery. Despite only having six guns in a 2x3 turret layout, one fore and one aft, these 406mm guns are extremely powerful for a number of reasons. These turrets have a 180 degree turning time of 30 seconds, a reload speed of 28.6 seconds and a max firing range of 25 kilometers. Yes, you are not hearing things, I did indeed say 25 kilometers, which can even be increased to 30 kilometers when using the spotter plane if one so desires. This huge firing range allows one to fire with impunity across the map against spotted targets. This is further bolstered by having extremely fast shell speeds of 850 meters per second for both high explosive and armor piercing rounds and a very good max dispersion of 240 meters which is even better than Odin's 251 meters despite having a far bigger gun caliber. Champagne's high explosive shells are capable of inflicting a max damage of 6100 with a base fire chance of 49% with 68mm of armour penetration making them very effective against angled targets while her armour piercing can hit for a max damage of 12,100. Champagne does have quite decent secondary armament which includes 24 100mm guns firing high explosive shells which cause a max damage of 1400 a fire chance of 6% but only 17mm of HE penetration and a slowish shell speed of 780m per second. The additional 9 152mm guns are much better, can inflict a max damage of 2200, have a fire chance of 12% with 25mm of HE pen and a faster shell speed of 870m per second. Both these secondary gun calibers have a max firing range of 7.3 kilometers, which can be increased to 7.7 kilometers with the Mike Yankee signal flag. I did try playing around with a secondary build, but I did find it very difficult to tank damage and be effective over the course of a game on a regular basis. The weakness I found was taking huge amounts of secondary damage, especially from the likes of the German battleships like Bismarck, Tirpitz and Odin which are very regular opponents whose secondaries are all able to pen both fore and aft end sections of Champagne's armour. It just felt like trying to insert a round peg into a square hole trying to play a secondary build. I'm not saying it's not possible but it requires a skill level in playing battleships I simply do not possess. Being able to adapt Champagne's great guns and range to a hard hitting cruiser role just felt like a more natural fit for my strengths and preferred playstyle. And I must admit when I started finding my groove in this ship Champagne began to feel like quite a fun ship to play. Having this hardcore deletion power at one's fingertips can feel incredibly satisfying and is one of the main reasons I feel Champagne will be quite popular now on release. I've already mentioned the reasons for choosing Champagne being threefold. Having already examined the guns and range, let's now look at Champagne's maneuverability. 
with a base speed of 34 knots, which can be increased to 35.7 knots with the Sierra Mike signal flag and further enhanced with the engine boost consumable for an additional 8%, allowing Champagne to attain a max straight line speed of 38.5 knots, allowing you to outrun virtually all cruisers and battleships with speeds more familiar to destroyers. This great speed allows Champagne to traverse the battlefield rapidly, combined with this great range to bring guns to bear no matter where the target. Combined with the turning circle of 850 meters and a very good rudder shift time of 12.4 seconds, which does include the steering gears mod, which makes her feel just as nimble on top of this great speed. Again, it's this trifecta of great guns, range and mobility that make Champagne stand out and shine. One could use the term glass cannon, but when angled correctly, Champagne can feel relatively tanky, always being careful to not present either a straight bow or stern, but showing just enough angle to tempt enemy battleships to shoot at her broadside and then utilizing this very good rudder shift to angle accordingly when fired upon. Champagne gets a concealment rating of 47 when utilizing a full stealth build, equating to a surface detection range of 12.9 kilometers and 8.9 kilometers by enemy aircraft. When it comes to dealing with those enemy aircraft, Champagne gets an AA defense rating of 70 with a grand total of 75 AA batteries, ranging from 25 millimeters up to 152 millimeters, with a continuous average damage of 167, with six flak explosions per salvo, capable of a max damage of 1323, and a max firing range of 5.8 kilometers. Champagne will face plenty of difficulties, when dealing with prolonged enemy air attack, so I do highly suggest using the fighter consumable if queuing regularly with aircraft carriers for additional protection. There was fortunately no carriers in this game, allowing me to play the free roving role which really does suit Champagne quite well in my opinion, to be able to regularly launch attacks from concealment. This has been quite a close game throughout ebbing and flowing each way. I hope I was able to provide you some insight on this brand new addition to the game. The Champagne, while not easy to play in direct confrontations, performs very well when positioned carefully, and again having these incredibly powerful guns at one's disposal feels very empowering. If you enjoyed this review make sure to hit that like button, subscribe and enter the giveaway and if you would like to see more or ask any questions feel free to come on over to twitch where i stream regularly now a few times a week the links can be found in the video's description and at the end of the video we have this game now under control all that remains is to take out this remaining bloody vostok got my secondaries firing just have to maintain a tight angle the bloody Vostok does have quite large caliber. Keep the secondaries going. The bloody Vostok is continuing to reverse behind cover in behind that island. I'm gonna pop a heel. We did get a couple of pens there. There is one thing you have to be very careful with when turning to fire those rear guns is being very careful about showing too much broadside. I'm just showing a little bit too much and you can see straight away that Vladdy is capable of doing quite a bit of damage. Still quite a nice game, 2k base. I'd like to thank you once again all for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more. Take a moment to check out some of my most recent videos 
and leave a comment below. And until the next time, keep sailing it like you stole it.